Welcome to Flockbase Video Tutorials. This video is going to be a quick start tutorial to get your organization up and running with the basic features of Flockbase. If you're just getting started with Flockbase, there are a few tasks that you'll need to take care of at the beginning to get everything set up to work properly. For the combined desktop version and all cloud versions, some accounting setup is necessary when you're first getting started. This is so that your accounting records and your membership and contribution records can function seamlessly together. Because this tutorial is generic and can be applied to multiple versions and plans, your menu and options may look a little different than what is shown on my screen. Please do not be concerned as everything in this tutorial is equally applicable to all users of the desktop combined software and all users on any cloud plan. The first step is to set up your funds. At a minimum, you must have a general fund. If your church accepts designated or restricted contributions, then you will also need a fund for each designation. Designated funds may include things like building, missions, or youth ministry. Funds are different from bank accounts, and a church can easily track multiple funds while still only maintaining a single bank account. On a balance sheet, the total in the bank account, or accounts, and all other assets is balanced against the total in the funds minus liabilities. If you have any questions about funds, you can check out the Accounting for Churches ebook received with every purchase or subscription. To create your funds, click on Settings, Financial, and then Funds. Here you will see any funds which have already been created. To create your own, click the Add button in the top right. Upon doing so, an options box will appear. Here, you can name the fund and select or deselect from two options. Don't worry about typing the word fund at the end of the name, since it will automatically be added for you. The first option is to create income and expense accounts connected to the new fund. You will likely want this box checked because the fund, each fund needs an income account connected to it in order to put money into that fund and an expense account connected to it in order to take money out of that fund. The second option is to create a contribution purpose attached to the fund. This makes it so the contributions can be designated to that fund. Once you've gotten your fund set up, you can go to Settings, Financial, and then Accounts to see the income and expense accounts just created and fill in the rest of your chart of accounts. To create a new account, click the Add button in the top right. There are a few things that every account needs. The first is a name. For the example, we'll create a new expense account called Mileage Reimbursement Expenses. This account will now be sorted to the very top as it doesn't have information to be sorted with the rest of the chart. Working left to right, the next thing the account needs is a type. This account will be an expense account, but there are other options as well. You will also need at least one cash slash bank account in order to get started with some accounting features as your general fund is different from and does not constitute a bank account. After the type, you can enter an account number. Numbers affect the order in which accounts appear on reports. Reports are sorted by fund, then account type, then department if applicable, then account number. Account numbers are not mandatory, they're simply for your convenience. For this example, we are going to use one dash five zero one zero. In the numbering system we generally recommend, 5,000 level accounts are expenses, and the one at the beginning designates that this account is connected to fund number one, the general fund. If you would like to learn more about the recommended numbering system, please check your user guide. After the number, for all income and expense accounts, you must select a fund. Mileage reimbursement is not normally connected to any restricted fund, so this account will be connected to the general fund, which accounts for all undesignated funds. Think of the general fund as essentially the operating funds of the church. After the fund, you can select a department. Departments are helpful, but not mandatory, groups of expense accounts that serve similar yet distinct uses. We can put this account in the administration department. The Profit and Loss Report will group expenses by department and provide a subtotal for each. The last box is for the 1099 code. This only applies for expense accounts used to pay someone receiving a 1099 at the end of the year from your church. If you're using an expense account to pay a private contractor, you must select box 7 in the 1099 code box so that everything is correctly allocated when you print your 1099 
using Flockbase at the end of the year. You must also designate the payee as a 1099 recipient in their payee setup screen. Once you have entered the rest of your chart of accounts, you can go to Settings, Financial, and then Purposes to look at your contribution purposes and make sure they are set up correctly for recording contributions. Here you will see any purposes that were checked to be created automatically when you created your funds. Make sure that each is connected to the income account that will put the contribution into the correct fund. You can also edit the name of any purpose by clicking the text and beginning to type. You will see two boxes next to each purpose. Make sure that they are selected or deselected as applicable for whether or not contributions to that purpose are tax deductible and for whether or not those purposes appear for online givers. The online giving option may appear for those who are on a plan where online giving integration is available, even if they have not signed up for it. In that case, the box does nothing regardless of whether it is selected or not. Now your accounting site is totally set up to start recording contributions or inputting bookkeeping records in the register. All that remains is to set up some households and members in order to record contributions. To add households and members, go to Membership and then click Households. Importantly, households cannot make contributions, only members can make contributions in keeping with IRS guidelines stating that individuals make contributions, not couples or families. To add a household, there are two options in the top right corner of the screen. New gives you the opportunity to enter in all household information, while Quick Add allows you to enter just the name of the head of household from which a household and member will be created. Just a quick note here, uh, if you click Quick Add, then you can also use that to create a new member and simply add them to an existing household. Leaving the household box blank is what creates a new household. When you click New, you will see a new blank household profile. The print name is what will appear on reports, while the sort ID is what appears in your records. Often the print name will be first name, last name, while the sort ID might be last name, first name. Once you've got the household information you want on the profile, click Add under Household Members to add a new member to this household. Remember, every individual within the household must be included as a member, even the head of household. We do this so that you can communicate and take attendance at both the household or family and member or individual levels. Add the name and other information to the member profile. When you're done, click Done, then Back. Now that you have some members in, you're ready to enter contributions. To do so, go to Contributions and then Create. For each contribution, you will need to record the date, the contributing member by name or envelope number, the payment type or method of payment, and the check number if applicable. Once that's recorded, select the purpose for the contribution and its amount. You can also enter a memo for internal record keeping if so desired. Once the information is all correct, click Next to save the record and proceed to create a new contribution. Those are the basic steps for getting started in Flockbase. Now that you have funds, accounts, purposes, and members, you're able to start getting records entered and are ready to proceed with other features of the program. For more information on any Flockbase features, please check your user guide or visit the resource tab at www.flockbase.com. We are also available to answer your questions by email, info at flockbase.com, or by phone, 877-883-5625. As always, I hope God continues to bless your ministry.